Now, guys, <laughs> this is unexpected. I was just directed by my guides to do um, love life readings, so to speak, <clears throat> for all signs. Um, and they will not be part of my regular uh, channel, apparently. But because we are in, um, in a time where we have four super moons in a row, and the closer the moon, when the, when the, when the moon is very close to Earth, that's called a super moon because it, it, it appears larger in the sky. Therefore, our emotions are a bit more or even further out there than usual. So I was just asked by my guides to do these readings for the months of July, August and September. So there will be three readings, so to speak, added. <laughs> Uh, but what will happen here is, uh, this, will be, this will be short, hopefully. <laughs> and what I will do is, I will do these Love Life readings um, for all signs. But don't worry, this video is timestamped. So if you haven't got the time to watch everything, I always say to people, you know, watch everything. Because your partner might have a different sign or the, uh, star sign or zodiac to you. Um, so maybe... You can, you can then work with the energy that the guides are highlighting here, if that makes sense, right? Um, and if you really are a person that says, like, no, nah, I only want to watch my own sign, that's perfectly fine. If you just want to watch your own sign or zodiac, it is timestamped. Go to the description box and just click on the timestamp for your sign or for your zodiac, and there you have it. Like I said, I'm quite surprised. Um, but as I always say, I only work here. So if the guides want me to do love life videos all of a sudden, um, while the super moons are out there, this is exactly what is going to happen. Still feel weird about this. Anyway, so what we will do is we will just go through all the signs, you know, all the signs, mm -hmm. and then um, take it from there. Let me just get a sip of coffee. You are watching Thomas's Tower Readings with myself, Thomas Yanai. Please like, subscribe, and share. And please share widely. Here we go. This is your July 2023 Love Life Reading for All Signs, timestamped starting with Aries. Let me just put this over here so I don't mess that up. Starting with Aries. Aries, let's have a look what we got for your love life or the flow of your love life in the month of July 2023 because this is when the um, the supermoon highlights your emotions. So let's have a look. All right. Mm. Aries. It's not negative, but it's not positive either. What you have is literally the energy of when it comes to reflecting of where you are in your love life, you might reach rock bottom. Now, that sounds, that's the negative part. That sounds negative. It's not meant to sound negative. What it is meant is you might be in a relationship that you think it really works. And what the guides are saying is, is it? Reflect on whether or not it is really working. So that's what rock bottom does. You, 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 you reach sort of a level. And even in a relationship that works, you might reach a plateau and maybe there's something you need, to, you need to, to look at. And that is what the guides are asking you. When it comes to your love life, the flow seems difficult because you have rock bottom, rock bottom, ro uh, can't pronounce it, rock bottom. <laughs> and so therefore you have to revisit your emotions when it comes to the relationship you're in. If you're not, should you not be in a relationship, Aries? then what you need to realize is that you may likely uh, have still some trauma, some pain from, from earlier relationships, and you would be wise um, attempting to let that go so you're not taking it with you into a relationship to a large extent. Because you also have longing for home, homesick to the stars, which means, remember, I always say the same thing, we come from the stars, right? You and I, we're all star seeds. And then we agreed to be here. And there's a part of you that really wants to go home this month. So what helps you, what will help you this month to connect is meditation and journeying 
to your ancestors, if that makes sense, because this is the energy that I'm getting. So don't hit this wrong, Aries. I'm not getting breakups or mayhem for your sign. All the guides are saying is, be honest. What do you really feel? Where are you going with regards to your love life and how it flows? You owe it to yourself to be very clear on what it is you want and don't want and therefore manifest just that. And if you are in a relationship, maybe it needs a little bit of tweaking or redirecting. That was Aries. Now going into Taurus. Here we go. I'm drawn to these guys. And you will notice what will happen is I will only ever use two cards because two are couples, right? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use them for this reason. Right, Taurus. So July is, is not super bad. You have enlightenment and positivity. What the guides are saying is no matter how you feel at this point in time with regards to your love life, the only thing, anything works for you is by being positive, putting positivity in. You have the word enlightenment. It's one of those words that it gets throwing around. Um, everybody wants to be enlightened, but you have to put the bloody work in. <laughs> and that's what I'm getting for Taurians. Um, there's a couple of things here. Because you have positivity, positivity alone will not solve it. You are asked to look at where are you going with your love life. Again, if you're not in a relationship, where am I going with manifesting it? Right? And then manifest from the highest point of view and allow yourself to see all your power, all your beauty and not the things you, you feel you do wrong. Really, really important not to go there. Right? Um, so, and then enlightenment comes from, from being honest and truthfully reflecting, which again seems to be um, a theme here because reflection was also um, part of Aries. I, I, I assume, presume, that this will likely be a theme um, because of the of the supermoon. And the supermoon obviously means that the, the, the moon is closer to Earth. Therefore, anything to do with, with uh, emotions is more in the forefront. So logically speaking, looking at it means reflecting just by itself. In any case, that was uh, Taurus going into Gemini. Geminis, are you ready? This is your love life reading for the month of July 2023. Totally unexpected that I do stuff like this, but um, I will not argue with my guides. I know better. So, Gemini. This is not bad. You have gateway and openness, which is actually quite interesting because what the guides are saying, Gemini. Now, Gemini, you are the sign of the, of the, 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 the can't talk, of the twin. So, you will always do better emotionally in a relationship and with someone um, that sounds a bit direct, that you can be intimate with. Because we only we learn in any relationships. And for Gemini, that is really, really important to have that significant other in your life. Should your life, if your life has been a shit show, right, you can now change it because you have gateway and openness. What the guides are saying is, and this is quite interesting because Gemini is the sign that sort of, you know, when it comes to, imprints the idea is always that gemini misses the twin and so therefore is looking for things and might feel a bit alone that's not what i'm getting for you at all i'm not knocking your imprints all i'm saying is this is just not what i'm getting for your love life love life you have the gateway so what the guides are saying is you look at what you want and then you go for it provided you are open to really experience it so if you try to manifest the relationship or see if the relationship you're, you're in needs to be tweaked. You have to entertain the idea that this could actually work. So when you have openness, they're asking you to openly and positively go forward and have some faith that things will actually work. And it goes both ways. What that means is it is the same. It applies in the same, by the same token uh, whether or not you're in a relationship or not. Okay, that was Gemini. So guys, you are watching Thomas's Tower Readings. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you like my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. That's buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. Going from Gemini to Cancer. 
She's a dancer, a romancer. Anyway, cancer, you ready? All right. Now, this is actually short and sweet uh, for, for your sign because you literally have truth in abundance. Unless you are truthful with regards to who you spend your time with, what do you see? Are you just looking for love and you just find it anywhere? Or is this real? So, truth needs no defense. That's another important thing for, for Cancerians to understand this month. Should you be in a relationship that is very judgmental, that, where someone says, oh, you should change this, you should change this, tell them the F off. Because your truth needs no defense. Be who you are, and this is the whole point, you are who you are, but also reflect on who you are and how much it say, serves you. That makes sense, because when you find your own essence, regardless of who, you, who you're with, um, you will find the abundance And abundance in this case means you, you will likely find a relationship that sort of lasts. So should you be in a relationship, have a look how truthful is this relationship to what I'm really feeling. You know, because sometimes we, we, we attract these in-between people, right, which are also uh, needed. And it's obviously there's contracts and contracts and all that kind of stuff. In your case, it feels to me very much for Cancerians to... Um, to take the reflective part of this energy, which means of the supermoons, um, quite serious and, and look at, you know, who am I in the scheme of things, right? Uh, this is the way for you to, to um, manifest abundance. All right, Cancerians, that was that. Moving into Leo, and I'm drawn to the astrological or astrology cards. That's not bad, because Leo is governed by the sun, and you have Mars, which is a, a fiery planet. So here you have Mars and the south node. Here is important. Whether or not you're in a relationship is, and essentially speaking here, not the most important thing. This is just general information for the sign of Leo. right? So remember, Leo, you are the fifth sign, and five is the number of change. So, and, and as, a, as a depiction of a lion, A male lion is the depiction of your sign or of your zodiac. And it is important to have some me time at all times and have the option to have a bit of me time. Really important. The point is, because your depiction is a lion that needs to sort of uh, walk its perimeter, you have mass and the energy of motion. And therefore, pay attention to the relationship you're in or you're manifesting and make sure that you're moving forward. Don't procrastinate over shit that happened in another relationship or earlier in this relationship. Attempt to sort it, but don't live in the past because the second energy here is the South Node, which is all about past. It will not serve you to be in the past, remember things that didn't work. Your job is to move forward, right? Again, You, you have Leo energy and Mars energy. Mars knows about your energy levels. And Mars is in your face. So you can be in your face to a partner or to yourself when it comes to looking at stuff. That makes sense. That doesn't mean you have to be nasty. But you can say, like, you know, this is really not working. And I want us to work on it. That sort of directness. Um, and you will just be fine. Now, the interesting thing here is that these cards that I was drawn to here have numbers. And you have the number 22 for Mars and the number 33 for, for your past. So what that means is you have two master numbers, same double-digit numbers are known as master numbers, while in astrology, because I'm most drawn to the astrology, astrology cards, um, really only 11 and 22 are seen as master numbers because only they would fit into a calendar. You still have master numbers. Master numbers means that the energy of these messages here flow much more direct, which is what Leo is about, and much more powerful. So this is a really good month for you, right? Also, this is your, for most of you, this will be your birth month. Yeah, we're moving into July, so on the, on the 23rd or whatever it is, we're going into, into your sign. So your sign will also be the strongest by the end of the month. So therefore, this will even be stronger for you to be able to solve something. But you have master numbers. So don't you worry. 
You just go and say what needs to be said and, and see what needs to be tweaked. And that's all you need to do, Leo. Right? So that's that. Now we're going into Virgo. I'm drawn to the same deck. Virgo. Right. You have the word dignified and the word change in combination with this planet. I will not pronounce it because I always get it wrong and people laugh their bloody heads off because I can't pronounce Uranus, whatever, right? So I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> the point is that planet is the planet of sudden and unexpected change. And the and that is your outgoing energy. Your incoming energy is strength and, and being dignified. What the guides are saying to you, whether or not you're in a relationship, you have to understand that what you really need, what you really should manifest or at all times demand is to be treated dignified. Right? Don't allow anyone to overwrite you and your opinions. Really, really important. It comes through here strongly for Virgo. Um, that you're not, again, sign of Virgo is the sign of the maiden. So, you know, in, when, when you love someone, you want to help them. At this point in time, you're not asked to help anybody. You're, you're, you're asked for whoever it is you're with or you're manifesting to be with to treat you with the utmost of respect. And at the same time, what is asked of you, because there's change in the outgoing energy, is for you to not, I, re I repeat, to not manifest the same relationship you've had. Should you be in a relationship, look at what isn't working. Talk to your partner, make changes and make sure that that stuff that got you into this little bit of a pickle here is no longer happening. Really, really important. Okay, Virgo, that's that. And now we're going to the next sign, which is Libra. Now remember, Libra, you are um, the sign 7, which is the number of highest protection and healing. And what Libra really wants is harmony. So let's see if this is uh, reflected in, in the energy of your love life reading here. Really surprised that the guides asked me to do this. I'm just not known to doing it. Every now and then I do it, you know, uh, because of... Um, uh, Valentine's Day, but I'm surprised that they brought that to me. And so anyway, <laughs> it is all good. Now, Libra, you have what is known as technology and silence. And this sounds a bit, this really may sound completely unrelated, but it's not. What I'm getting for you is to understand that you're Libra and you need harmony. Now, the problem is that you're depicted by, a, by an old-fashioned scale so in order for you to reach harmony you cannot do it on your own there needs to be a counterbalance or a counterweight on your scale to make this work what you're being asked this month is to notice how much your aura is affected by the magnetic field so you have technology which is their way of saying you know anything to do with with microwaves even even uh, cell phones mobile phones that kind of stuff um will affect your energy this month quite strongly and it will also affect how you experience your love life what i'm getting uh, for some of you obviously you know when i record this I, my belief is, has always been that the person who needs to hear this will find the video so if you're libra and you hear this there's a good chance that this is for you but it feels a bit specific that's why i'm saying is for some of you the point is if you are a person that can't hold conversations because you can't pry yourself away from technology, you already have a problem. Same way, if you are in a relationship with someone or should you go out with someone, the only time they should be allowed to look at their bloody phone is when they're trying to catch a bus. Be old-fashioned about this. Don't have distractions. Make sure that you prioritize your manifestation for a relationship and that you prioritize the person you're with. It just feels to me that somehow if there's technology involved, it doesn't work. Now, that also includes obviously things like TV. And I'm not knocking it. You could you could sit with, with your partner or you want a partner and you kind of go, you know, it would be nice to just watch a movie together. That's all good. But don't watch a movie together that you then do not share 
thoughts about. It's, you know, it's one thing to relax. What I'm getting is, is to not be distracted by stuff that has to do with technology. Because you have the silence next to it. The most important thing for you this month, Libra, is to manifest someone that you can have silence with that isn't awkward. Imagine you are with someone where you don't have to talk all night. We just can hang out, enjoy a walk. Doesn't mean you have to be silent. But there shouldn't be any awkwardness when you just don't want to make conversation a lot, which is quite something in a relationship because a lot of people describe, you know, having nothing to talk about as awkward silence and then they reflect, oh, is the relationship still working? Sometimes it is just nice to have someone that you're emotionally connected to and you don't need words. Right? So that is what you ask for, um, Libras. Okay, that's it. Going into Scorpio. Scorpio. Little, 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 little. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I said earlier that I will be using two cards per sign because two is a sign of, of couples, that makes sense, or togetherness. And for Scorpio, the guide said, no, one card is enough. <laughs> okay, I only work here, whatever the guides tell me to do. I do, apart from jumping off a bridge. <laughs> anyway, Scorpio, what you asked, and this is why you only have one direction, not related to the band. I hear there's a band called One Direction. Point is, you have patience. And what the guides are asking you, when it comes to manifestation, be patient. Scorpio is depicted by the scorpion. The scorpion has the biggest fight or flight response of all animals on this planet. And this is your imprint. You might sometimes overreact or you might bolt when you feel this isn't quite going anywhere. At this point in time, July 2023, Scorpios, whether, you're not, whether or not you're manifesting a relationship or you are in one, now is not the time to be impatient. You have to have patience. You have to see where is this going? That doesn't mean you have to stick with it forever. But at this point in time, it would be a mistake to just bolt because then nothing is solved. Okay, so that was Scorpio. Again, surprising. And now we're going into Capricorn, drawn to the same deck. And Capricorn, this is your love life, July 2023. And the reason why I'm recording this is because of the supermoon um, so you can expect similar readings uh, for July, which is what you're watching, um, August and September, because that's when we have the supermoons. I would be very surprised if I would keep that up. Right. Okay, in any case. <laughs> um, Sagittarius. Sorry, we were, what, 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 yeah, we were Sagittarius. Sorry, not Capricorn. Sagittarius. Sagittarius, Sagittarius. Here we go. Sagittarius, you have power and wonders. It's quite simple. Whether or not you're manifesting a relationship or you're in a relationship. Ugh, sounds again, sounds a bit direct, sounds a bit wrong sometimes, but it's not meant that way. To a certain extent, Sagittarians, you have the sign of the archer. So you have to decide how far do you actually uh, shoot the arrow, how much energy, how much emphasis do you put on your love life. And you have to come and step into your power this month. Really important. Look at it. It is what it is. And if it isn't, which means you're, you're, you're uh, not in a relationship at this point in time, step into your power. Look at what has happened to you that may hinder you from manifesting right. And if you are in a relationship or should you be in a relationship, step into your power. Sounds a bit wrong, but it's just what I'm getting. It's quite strongly what I'm getting for Sagittarius. Speak up. Right? Really important, speak up, because you have wonders next. And you might be surprised when you sort of, you know, solve a few things by, by highlighting them. Um, you might be very lucky because the other party, so to speak, will likely respond uh, by trying to change that. So that is really the energy that I'm getting for for Sagittarius, I know I said from Scorpio we went to Capricorn. I completely messed it up. Don't forget, you know. But it will be time stamped, and I will have uh, probably 
mentioned that I mean Sagittarius, so this is for Sagittarius, right? And now finally, we're coming to Capricorn. Capricorns, are you ready? This is your July 2023 Love Life reading. And let's see what we got for Capricorn. Interesting. You have the second house, which is about look at your resources and then you have Scorpio which means about um, checking things out investigating the point the guys are making with you is quite interesting does the relationship you're in drain you your resources is nothing else than your energy all the guys are saying is are you tired of trying to manifest a relationship right if you are what the guys are saying is maybe just let it all flow, right? If it's meant to be, if it comes to you, it comes to you. So don't get super pushy about trying to make uh, massive changes here this month, uh, um, Capricorns. Your job is to just hold your energy, make sure that you look after yourself. Now, when it comes to the outgoing energy with this investigation, it is quite interesting because it has the number eight. The number eight can be seen and is seen as the number of stumbling blocks. And when you have an eight and then you look at it from a different point of view, it topples over, it becomes infinity, which means you have to step back, look at things and then see, does it actually change? Will it change? And only if it changes, is there a flow to be seen that is positive. This is all about, in a way, affirming what you already know about the relationship you're in and then not making massive changes at this point in time. It doesn't mean you have to oops, it doesn't mean you have to sit with it forever, but it feels to me because you're supposed to keep your energy high and, and more close to your heart, it would not be the best month, let's put it this way, um, to make massive changes because you might not be energetically speaking uh, um, prepared to deal with a lot of change at this point in time. Right? But because you have investigate, trust what you're feeling about the relationship you're in and also look at if you're manifesting a new relationship or if you're that person that needs to be wants to be in a relationship um, look at what is it you really appreciate in a partner and then manifest that this comes to you but at all times if this is stressful do nothing you have the energy of resources coming in you need to watch your energy levels massively this month, dear Capricorns. Okay, moving on to the 11th of 12th sign, which obviously is Aquarius. Here we go. Aquarius. <laughs> you have fun and the Sphinx, which is this Egyptian thing. Actually, make the point is showing it into the mirror. Let me just show this. Uh, here. So, energetically speaking, what the guides are saying is because you have the, the, the Egyptian Sphinx, which is interesting because when you look at the, at, at, the, at the symbolism, it has eroded over time. And eventually, or in the beginning, um, the idea is always that the Sphinx has, a, has the face of, a, of, a, of, a, of sort of a, a man, a person, but has the body of a lion and at some stage it would have had wings. So there is a trinity, if that makes sense, inside you. Everything you are, everything that you are, anything that you feel, this is me in your entirety, ought to be looked at in any relationship that you are in or that you are asking for. Don't do one-sided things. Don't give yourself over and just be there for others, which is an Aquarius trait. You're the water bearer, you're the giver. Now, here's the good thing. The energy here, when it comes to your love life, is fun. So you can expect a high energy month, right? And you also have to look at anything um, from a, um, a, a high energy point. So if you can, if you want to redirect something in your relationship, say it with tongue in cheek, have a bit of fun with it. Don't be that way, right? And just understand, because the Sphinx is not going anywhere, right? 
you have to still be grounded and make sure that anything that you say that you want to have changed that and everything that you want to make sure that you that your partner really looks at um you can be a bit more direct and a bit more uh, grounded in that energy right so again short and sweet uh, for for aquarius and now we're going to the final sign this is for pisces 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 this is your july 2023 Love life, the radio is only happening because of the super moon phase. So there will be another one for August and another one for September. Don't quote me on it. <laughs> But there's a good chance that there will be another one. Anyway, uh, Pisceans, are you ready, Pisces? Now that is interesting. Pisces, you have, so you always get two cards, that makes sense. So you have blessings coming in and taking risks. So. Whatever it is you asked for, whatever it is you're hoping for, is beginning to come in. So you're quite blessed, if that makes sense. The universe heard you, listened to you. But you also have to take risks. So what I'm getting for Pisceans, it will not necessarily be likely that you manifested a relationship and then you go to bloody Asta and there she is or there he is. doesn't really look that way. So if you are drawn to someone that you think, that feels like I manifested this, but it is not exactly what you expected, then there's one thing you need to understand. Expect nothing. You manifest on your highest good. You say, right, I'm ready, I'm willing to uh, give myself, you know, my all in a relationship, you know, send me someone that fits, right, if that makes sense. Uh, but you have to take risks. So what the guides are saying is what doesn't work for Pisceans this month is to sit there and hope that someone else makes the first move. Take risks. If you take risk and you say to someone, hello, fancy going out, whatever you do, um, don't worry if you get rejected. That's just part of, the, of, of how the world works. You live. But what I'm getting strongly is, is now that you manifested a new beginning, don't look, walk around and look for it. Is it here? Is it there? Don't, don't look for it. But the moment you feel I'm drawn to that person over there that I'm just looking at, um, even though that might not mean that this is the person, what the guides are saying is take risks. Okay, that sounds horrible. G grow a pair. That's what I'm getting. It's like, you know, come on, get some balls. Go after what you feel could be the next big thing, if that makes sense. Sounds horrible. Not meant that way. But you understand the concept, I hope. What I'm getting for Pisceans, and I'm a Piscean too, so I'm still trying to, to figure out what, what exactly the universe is saying here. <laughs> um, the point is to be proactive. Really, really important. Right? So maybe now is the time uh, um, to download an app or whatever you have these days to look for that significant others. Be proactive. Right? So no more hiding, Pisceans. Okay, guys, that was very surprising, uh, all of it. No idea that I would be recording a love life reading for all signs. Really, really weird. But it is because the moon, the super moon, is the moon is closer to Earth. Our emotions are in the forefront. It makes sense, therefore, for my guides to say that to me. Um, that's it. Thank you all for watching. Remember, the video is timestamped. Um, right? And please share it widely. Really, really important because this is a, a very different different thing to what we normally do and um, since anybody and everybody is interested in love maybe it is a good thing for you to share it please do so thank you so much see you all soon bye, -bye.